Hello, and welcome to Fridge Camp. If you masticate for nutritional purposes, then this will be the show for Don't you. Don't use the word masticate. In the fridge today, we show you five microwave hacks you actually might use. Then stick around, we're going to cook up a sweet treat in a microwave that rivals this cake in a mug. But first, we're out to prove that using solely a microwave, you can cook great food. So this is how it's going to work. Dish number one, fish pie. This is an awesome mixture of salmon, cod and haddock in a creamy white wine sauce with leek, topped off with fennel and lemon mashed potato. Sounds delicious. Whilst I've created a dish using solely a microwave, James has also been slaving away in the kitchen doing exactly the same dish, but using traditional methods. You can obviously see the difference thanks to the coloration of an oven. However, you guys blindfolded, can you taste the difference between the two? So, let's fork up. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? Because not only have we got to taste the difference, we've also got to navigate a fork into the mouth. Is this the...? OK, I have no idea of the angle of which it's at. Oh, not that one. That's lovely. That's a good fish pie. <laughs> OK, you're all loaded, go. This is dribbling. Fish pie number two. That's hard. That tastes fresher. That tastes like lighter and cleaner. I don't know where you are, but I know what you mean. Yeah? Yeah. Good. <clears throat> I'm going to say the second one was done in the oven. There wasn't an obvious difference for me, so I'll say the first one was done in the oven. Yeah, I'd, I agree. And like the first one was um, was dodgier, like it'd been cooked. Oh, it sounds it sounds weird because like it'd been cooked for longer. So no huge discernible differences. This was how the microwavable one was made. So three potatoes, just stab them with a fork, place them into a glass bowl and into your microwave on full power for 10 minutes. That's about the equivalent of being in the oven for an hour. For the filling, we're going to make two portions. We've got two microwavable dishes. You can use teacups or coffee mugs if you haven't got things like this. And then between the two, we're going to divide some sliced leek, a knob of butter, a splash of white wine and half a clove of garlic crushed. The bowl will be hot, but potatoes are cooked. At this point, the filling, these can go into the microwave and they need five minutes whilst you make the mash. The advantage of cooking these in the microwave is they don't take on too much water, so you get a really fluffy mash. You want to take the flesh out of the skins and mash them with milk, butter, the zest of a lemon and a pinch of fennel seeds. Now the leeks are softened and the garlic has cooked out, we can add in the fish along with cream, mustard and chopped chives to make an awesome sauce. What's great about this is the fish goes in raw so all those juices form an amazing sauce. Next up we pile on our mashed potato and then because we can't emulate a crispy top in a microwave that you would get in an oven, we're going to add on almonds, pine nuts and some grated cheese. There we go, so many awesome flavours. If you want to leave one or two out, maybe the fennel seeds or the lemon or one of the nuts, you can simplify it, but this is the ultimate version. It now needs another four minutes in the microwave to cook the fish, and I suggest you do that on a plate to catch any dribbles. And there we go, all you need to do is check that it's piping hot all the way through. You can stick a metal skewer or a table knife in, leave it for a second, and just check that knife comes out hot. Otherwise, serve it with some steamed veg, equally easy, in the microwave. That's microwavable fish pie, sorted. I want to know if I was right. Yeah, tell us. Jamie was right. Yes! You can take your blindfold off, you'll see. You're kidding me. What you don't get is that colouring of the cheese right. and the almonds and the toasted pine nuts from the microwave one, but digging around and getting oh, a whole combined flavour, oh, much the same. You could serve me that and tell me it was made in an oven and I wouldn't even question it. Well, Ebbers, you have proved your point. Okay. Congratulations. If you are only equipped with a microwave, you can still cook a cracking fish pie. Mm. Barry, use this or not, you decide. <laughs> Mummy says I'm useful. If there was a zombie apocalypse, Jamie would survive because zombies eat brains. <laughs> James, as in beautiful James, as in chef James, as in I poach eggs in champagne vinegar James. <laughs>
Dish number two. A microwavable and or traditional method risotto. Both have smoked ham, squash and cabbage or cavolo nero. Not a huge amount of difference in the visual appearance. One of these is done in the microwave, one with constant stirring on the stove. So what you're telling us is um, that the Italians stopped watching this about <laughs> 10 seconds ago. Correct. You can't make an aeroplane sound. <laughs> <laughs> Hold out your hand. I'm gonna put it, gonna put it in your hand. Well, just for us, I do his hand. Yep. Mmm, tasty. Mmm. Okay. Oh, that is risotto. I like that. Yeah. Oh, it's gone. Oh, I've got black pepper. Oh, hinting. Oh, 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 it's gone everywhere. Oh. Still nice. That, really is, a, nice. that is a lot more flavoursome. I got a lot of cabbage. Second one had more flavour, but less bite. The first one had more bite, less flavour. I felt like the first one had a better texture. It was stodgier, it tastes more like a traditional risotto to me. And if you are limited to just a microwave, this is how you make it. Begin by finely dicing a shallot and a clove of garlic. Next up, the squash. Peel it and dice it as fine as possible. You want about half centimetre cube pieces. And then for the cavolo nero, take out the woody stalks and chop that up into squares. If you can't get that, use any green cabbage. That's all the hard work done. Now placed all of the chopped stuff into a bowl with some diced smoked ham, a knob of butter, a glass of white wine. Give it a mix and put it in the microwave for five minutes to cook. Grab yourself a little piece of squash and just taste it. Obviously there's plenty of cooking still to come, but it should be about half cooked. Next up, we can add in risotto rice, a stock cube crumbled, and some water. Then it goes back into the microwave for 10 minutes. You might want to stir it halfway through. After 10 minutes, you want to take it out of the microwave, give it a stir, and you want to test a grain of rice. What you're looking for is something that's soft all the way through and it hasn't got a bite to it. We're using an 800 watt microwave, and for us, it's going to need a couple more minutes. If your microwave is more or less powerful, you may have to adjust the time. Back in another couple of minutes. The colours look amazing, the smells in here are phenomenal. The only difference between a microwave risotto and one on a hob is you're not constantly stirring it. So to give it that creaminess, we're gonna add in some creme fraiche and plenty of grated parmesan. Season to taste and then serve it up. Garnish it with some radish, some cress, more grated parmesan. And there we go, microwavable smoked ham and squash risotto, sorted. And the great thing about the microwave one, it literally just uses one bowl, one knife, one chopping board, one microwave, job done. At the moment, I don't think one tastes better than another, they just taste slightly different. Yeah. Do you think it was dish one or dish two? Barry, you go first. Two. Two was cooked in a microwave. One was cooked in a microwave. No, why would you do that? Jamie wins again. No! <laughs> really? But they're both strong risottos, they and are. you get away with the creaminess here because of the creme fraiche and the parmesan. That's the thing. I would never normally make a risotto in a microwave. I would always do it on the hob. But that recipe surprises us all. You've taken your blindfolds off, haven't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, when I microwave, when I microwave, and when I'm me. Microwaves aren't just for bad food. You can get good food out of them too. And while we're loving off the microwave so much, why don't we show you some amazing microwavable hacks? I looked at the wrong camera all the way through that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to peel a lot of garlic very quickly because maybe you're addicted to garlic bread, or maybe you're trying to fend off an angry mob of vampires with something like Walking Out of the Dead mixed with Twilight but without that annoying grumpy girl, then this is the hack for you. Take a whole bulb of garlic, crush it in your hands, put it into a bowl and into a microwave for 30 seconds. When the garlic comes back out, it'll be much easier to peel because the cloves would have shrunk slightly due to dehydration and science. Think of all that time saved. That means you either get garlic bread quicker or you don't die as quickly from vampires. 
Don't you hate it when you need a microwave to reheat your favourite pasta, potato or panda neck warmer but you keep getting cold patches? Well, this is the hack for you. If you're looking to heat up a big lump of food, avoid just slopping it in the middle. What you want to do is create a ring and spread it out to increase your surface area and therefore it should cook quicker. Also, a microwave has a spinning plate for a reason. There's lots of hot and cold points in the microwave, so don't put your object in the middle of the microwave. Move it to the side and it'll cook more evenly. If, like real men, you have window boxes and a surplus of fresh herbs and you don't want to see them go to waste, then this is the hack for you. Strip the fresh herbs off of the stalks and lay them flat in between two sheets of kitchen paper. Blast them in the microwave for one minute if it's a hard herb, 40 seconds if it's a soft herb, and then intervals of about 20 seconds until they're dry. Drying herbs in a microwave is a lot quicker than oven drying, sun drying, or hanging, and therefore they retain a lot more color and a lot more flavor. Test the herbs and keep returning them back to the microwave for another 10 or 20 seconds at a time until they're completely dry, but they still have all the color and fragrance of fresh herbs. Store them in an airtight container for future kitchen fun. If you're looking to extract the maximum amount of juice from your citrus fruit because you're making a delicious marinade, having a margarita bath or hosting your own lemon party, then this is the hack for you. Take your fruit, heat it in the microwave for 10 to 20 seconds. You want it to be warm, not piping hot. Heating the molecules in the flesh of the fruit will make the membrane weaken and therefore will allow you to extract more juice from the fruit. So now the vampires are gone, your panda scarf is warm, you've trimmed your bush and the guys at the old people's home really like you, it's now time to clean your microwave. Place half a lemon in a bowl full of water, put that in the microwave and heat that up for anywhere between five and 10 minutes. This will steam clean your microwave, the acid will cut through any of the grease and you'll get a lovely citrusy smell. I reckon there are some actual hacks there that I might actually use. Microwaves are useful. Yeah, and also don't forget to subscribe because, well, we will make you hungry. And some bonus news, if you head over to Sorted Food, most of you will know we're exploring the lack of cooking skills in the UK and beyond and the consequences that has. We're beginning to share some of the stories we're uncovering. Those bonus videos are available over on Sorted Food. I reckon that fridge cam had everything. It had just the right level of microwave radiation. Yep, it had a weird three, four-way blindfold date thing. And a cracking pair. Don't forget to stay with us in the aftertaste. We're going to make a nut brittle in a microwave. Even better Where? than cake in a mug. Where was the cracking pair? Oh, it's here. I'm taking it with me. Uh-oh, cracking pair. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben did a joke. Ben did a joke! Ben did a joke! <laughs> I also get a piece of fruit. Ben did an innuendo, and talking of innuendos, nuts. James? I'm gonna make a nut brittle. In a microwave, that's the important bit. Oh, yeah. yeah.